So in this video, we're going to be going over some maintenance tips for the A1 Mini. Um, if you guys find this video useful, could you please leave a like, a comment, and uh, subscribe? It really goes us a long way in helping us grow the channel. And we also do giveaways here, so you know, it keeps you informed for those. Okay, let's get into the video. So really quickly, I'm just going to go over some of the tools I used. Um, so I use these nylon brushes. Uh, they come in really handy for getting into like the tight spots. Um, there might be like dust or debris or something you can't really get at um, with the microfiber cloth. So these do come in handy. I'll leave a link for all this stuff in the description, by the way. There'll be affiliate links. Um, I also use the super lube. I use the grease and the oil. Um, so you're using the oil for like your linear rails, uh, your linear guide rails. Um, you're using the grease for like your Z screw and stuff. Um, you're also going to want some like isopropyl alcohol. I just use this like uh, no name brand. Um, you can pick up anywhere. It doesn't really matter. It, I advise just go for the cheapest stuff you can find. Um, it all does the same thing. So, you know, all good there. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to get into the actual maintenance now. Uh, as long as you have all that stuff, you should be fine for this. So the areas we're going to be like targeting with the isopropyl alcohol and our microfiber claw is the Z axis, all the linear rails, basically the one on the X axis and the Z axis and then your y-axis uh, guide rails. Uh, it's kind of too difficult to clean the Z-screw with the isopropyl alcohol, but what I did was kind of just dip the nylon brushes in the isopropyl alcohol and just like go through the side of the casing with it. Um, so that's kind of what I'd recommend. Uh, when you're cleaning, just make sure you get all of the sides. So like where the bearings actually run along, you wanna get all the old grease out of there and you'll be surprised at how dirty that grease actually is. I, I know I was. Um, you want to get in there, just get as much of it off as humanly possible. Uh, you can see here, we went around and just did all of it. I went over it a couple of times just to make sure. And yeah, so once you have that done, your printer's kind of degreased. You're ready to go for applying your oil. Um, your oil is going to go on all the kind of fast moving parts. You can see here, we're shoving the nylon brushes through the casing and moving the X axis up and down. That's just so we can try get all sides of the z-screw you could take the z-screw out but i imagine that's a lot more work than you need to be doing so just push your nylon brush against the z-screw and move the x-axis up and down that's what i was doing um it worked fine got most of it off make sure you clean the nylon brushes as you go because you don't want to be rubbing dirt back into the z-screw uh that's kind of my only thing i would say but yeah just keep moving it up and down push the nylon brush against it you should be fine um it should get like the majority of like I need a kind of bigger stuff up off of it. So now we went along with our our oil. Uh, so this is our super lube oil. There's links in the description, and we went along the top of the y-axis guide rails, and just let the oil kind of spill over the the side of the guide rail, if you know what I mean. So you can see here, like we're going up top, and just letting it spill. Okay, I don't have the steadiest hands in the world. I'm not gonna lie, but once you kind of let it spill down. Any ex excess that comes off and falls onto the actual casing of the printer, you can just wipe it off with your microfiber cloth. Um, move your bed back and forth, you know, spread it out evenly as possible. Um, you don't want too much, but you don't want too little is the idea. And if there is any excess like overflow, it will just kind of come off and you just wipe it off. You see here, I'm wiping it off with the microfiber cloth. Um, you know, that's fine. You don't need to worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, Make sure you, I cleaned up the top as well, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you're, it has to look good. That's the idea, I guess. Um, as long as you, you know yourself, you're not like overdoing it. Um, so we went along here and did our x-axis linear rail. Um, again, not too much, not too little. Just in the grooves where the bearings run. Um, you can see here, I actually think I overdo it here somewhere. But uh, it kind of spills, but look, it happens. Just clean it up, you'll be fine. Uh, again, you're just going in that groove where the bearings are. When you're done kind of uh, lubricating, make sure you get both sides as well. You can see I moved the, the tool head out of the way to get in there. But you want to move your tool head again back and forth. Make sure you do the underside of the linear rail as well. That's really awkward, I'm not going to lie, because it's the oil is obviously a liquid and you're trying to do it upside down, like you're fighting gravity with it. Um, so you can see here, look, I'm trying, but it's kind of, you know, it's touch and go. What I decided to do with it is just tiny, tiny bits. Just be really careful, barely doing it, because you will spill. 
um, somewhere on your bed and stuff like that. I actually have always moved, like if you take your bed off altogether, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, you know, just take it off the magnet while you're doing this. I did try tilting it, but yeah, that honestly didn't work. So we're gonna move on and I'm gonna show you what else we did. So when you're doing the Z-axis linear rail, the easiest way I found to kind of do it is start up a little bit higher, put a bit on, let it kind of roll uh, down the length of it, see where it stops, and then continue on from there. Because um, you you are going to get some like spillage um, with this. Uh, you know, your the oil is fighting gravity, sadly. But um, yeah, no, just start up a little bit high, let it, put a bit on, let it roll to a stop. When it stops, start again from there and keep going. Um, that's the easiest way I found to do it. Now, you might have a different idea. If you do, please leave it in the comments. Uh, it all helps. This is just my research that you know I did and how I would do it. But if there's a better way, please let me know. Um, I'll try to include it in the next video I do on this. Once I had all the linear rails and all the different axes uh, lubricated, what I did was I went and calibrated the printer again. And this wasn't so much through the calibration, but just to get all the parts moving and spreading around the lubricant uh, kind of evenly. Um, so yeah, we just put it into calibration, let it do its thing. I think it's 12 minutes or something like that, it says. Um, but just, we're gonna be doing this twice. We're gonna be doing it now, and then we're gonna be doing it once we put the new hot end in. But again, this is just to make sure all the lubricant is spread evenly. Um, it will push out some excess lubricant. Um, so you can just give the printer another wipe, clean down any areas where it spills, where it comes out. Um, yeah, but I would recommend doing the calibration because it just, again, just spreads everything out. You can see here the x-axis is going, the bed eventually starts moving. Um, just helps make sure everything's spread out evenly. So after I got all everything lubed and greased and cleaned and all that lovely stuff, I went to basically changing out the hot end, um, which is honestly like the simplest process I think I've ever had to do for changing a hot end. Once you take the faceplate off, you're greeted with the actual hot end itself and its silicone sock. You want to take off the silicone sock and then you'll see this like gate. Uh, it's kind of, or I guess you call it a clasp. But when you, once you open up that, your hot end is basically free to be taken out. Um, it's just that little clasp there. Uh, I don't know why I kept going back and forth opening and closing it, but yeah, you get the idea. Um, I had to use an Allen key to get that little silver piece off. That's mainly because my fingers are too fat, but... You know, you might have smaller fingers than me. Um, hot and slides out. And uh, we ended up changing it with a 0 0.4 millimeter hardened steel hot end. Um, and my idea behind this was, this is going into a print farm. So I wanted, I'm hoping that the hardened steel won't last longer, even if it's only just printing regular P PTG. Um, so yeah, but see the flat part of the hot end? That needs to go against the flat part on the actual tool head. Um, and it just should just slide right in. Uh, what I find if you just if you go down low and then push up, it it slots in a lot better than what I was doing. I tried it a few different ways, but it's honestly so simple compared to any other hot end. I've had to change out. Um, just slides right in, no problem. Close the gate and you're done. Like, I it's honestly like it's ingenious to be fair. Um, and I hope more companies start doing stuff like this. Uh, but yeah. That's basically how you change the hot end. Uh, that simple, put your silicone sock back on and you're ready to rock and roll. The last thing I went off and did was just change out my bed. So I went from this uh, textured PEI uh, to, I wanted a smooth finish, the same as what I get off of my P1P. So I just changed out the bed. It's not really a maintenance thing, but just something I thought I'd include that I did um, for the video. But yeah, uh, just change out the bed. It's just a matter of lifting off the old one, putting the new one back on. Um, so yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video, um, please comment, like, subscribe. Um, you know, if you have anything that you would do differently, leave it in the comments. It all really helps. Um, you know, we're all in this together and it kind of, there's a learning curve. So if there's something I missed or something you'd like to see done differently, leave it in the comments. I'm trying to build a community over on Discord. So I'm going to leave a Discord link in the description uh, if anyone's interested in joining. We also do giveaways. We have another giveaway next month. Um, the end of June so if you want to be in for that subscribe you'll, you'll get notifications and stuff like that so yeah thanks for watching and I hope you have a good day